All right, guys, welcome back to the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast, episode 217. In today's episode, we've got a very special guest, Mr. Tommy Fleetwood. A few weeks back, pre-Christmas, we were out filming in Dubai. I got the pleasure and honour... And it really is an honor to spend time with Tommy Fleetwood. He's one of the nicest guys in the world. He really is. And considering he's one of the best players in the world, it's quite rare. We get to sit down with him, chat about his goals, his ambitions, how the Ryder Cup was. You know, don't forget he hit the iconic winning shot to retain the Ryder Cup before continuing to go on to win the Ryder Cup. Um, So it's pretty special, really, really special. Uh, I think you're going to really enjoy it. Sit back and relax. Now, before we do get into that, I think it's also definitely worth a shout out for Nick Dunlap this weekend, winning the American Express, the first amateur to win a PGA Tour event for 30 plus years. All the way back to 1991, it was the last time an amateur won on tour, and that was Phil Mickelson. Now, Nick Dunlap has got an unbelievable pedigree. He's already the junior amateur champion and the amateur champion, and what his future holds only knows. I think the last player to have both the a junior amateur championship and the main amateur championship was Tiger Woods. <laughs> so I think this guy is going to go a long way. And also big shout out to Rory for winning his fourth Dubai Desert Classic this weekend in epic style. Um, really good. I think he, he could have gone back to back winning weeks. He could have potentially won the Dubai Invitational, but my man, the guy who's on the podcast today, Tommy Fleetwood, won it. Now, this, again, is pre-recorded. It, he hadn't won the Dubai Invitational at this point of recording. Um, so just bear that in mind. But So sit back and enjoy this very chilled and relaxed chat with me and Guy and Mr. Tommy Fleetwood. <laughs> We're kicking things off straight away. Thanks for coming back on the podcast. Uh, no, uh, thank you. I've just said, actually, I'm a bit less nervous than last time. You weren't I nervous I last very, time. I was very nervous. You were so chilled and relaxed. <laughs> and you know what? The, in the last podcast that we did, which was like nearly two years ago now. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. It wasn't last Christmas. No, it's the year before. No. Which is one of the most successful podcasts we've ever done. Mm. And still to this day... Uh, the, one of the snippets I got from that podcast was why a player relationship with a brand is so important, a club brand. Oh, yeah, I do remember this now. And it was almost uh, like a mechanic for an F1 yeah. driver. And it, ever since, I'm like, yeah, it makes more sense <laughs> to me now. But thanks for coming on, back on. No, We're thank here you. Thank you. in Dubai, mm-hmm. here at the DP World Golf Performance Centre, the Tommy Fleetwood Golf Academy. It's quite a mouthful, yeah. You get used to it. It's the Tommy Fleetwood Academy at the DP World Golf Performance Centre at Jamira Golf States, if you want the... Um, that was nice. Full of fish. When you've said it, when you've had to say it enough times, like you, you get it. Well, one thing, it's stunning. <laughs> it's <laughs> absolutely stunning. And it's not even... It's like so close to Dubai. We're staying in Dubai and it took like 15 minutes yeah. to get here today. Um, there's two golf courses here, Earth Course, Fire Course. Mm-hmm. We've got a little match lined up today on the Earth Course. Yeah. Which I'm excited about a rematch a 10 shot challenge rematch as i actually said you always seem to pick times when i've not practiced no don't give me this stuff <laughs> and uh, you, when is, when is there a time that you actually, don't do you know what? i'm not doing that people get their excuses in early when they're not confident and i'm not going to do that i take that back scratch that well you beat me last time so let's see what no, happens we tied we tied <laughs> it was a draw wasn't it was we it tied you made a double on I think the you last, glossed over that though Rick very very when you said oh it's a, a little match this is a huge match the uh, 10 shot challenge with Tommy was it 4 point something million it's views it's still the most viewed 10 shot challenge we've ever done um, this is redemption today. This is. This is a big one. I'm excited about <laughs> it. I'm, I'm I'm probably not that I might show on the golf course today, but I'm a little bit more chilled as well today. What tees are we going to play? Whatever you want. Make okay. it friendly, though. We'll play a composite course. <laughs> nice. Um, anything exciting happened this year? Any kind of big event that <laughs> happened? Uh, kind of the back end of the year? Any iconic shots that you managed oh, to me. pull out the bag? And I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> any, any US fans that are upset with you? <laughs> How incredible was the Ryder Cup this year? I'm going to dive straight into that. Uh, it was, it was, it was good. It was, it was very cool. I think, um, like, the, it's it's always like such a special, a special time for us that 
um, are lucky enough to make the team or get selected for the team and then and then play I think um, and yeah everything revolving around the Ryder Cup uh, is extremely ex- extremely special um, it meant a lot to the the ones you know that were there at Whistling Straits where at the end of the day like we got an absolute you know thrashing yeah. and um, so I think I think this this time just felt very uh, just very satisfying um, yeah felt like redemption mm-hmm. I think we've I think just ultimately two years ago it's it's not that you get it's not that you get beat it's not losing yeah. I think it was that we just felt like um, we didn't play like we could we didn't do ourselves justice um, as a team and then um, two years is a long time and I think it happens every single Ryder Cup where one team has won uh, there's this I don't know everybody seems to like break it down and um, and then plan on this uh, especially this time I think if you look at um, if you go back to Whistling Straits we were a team that didn't play like we could and we weren't particularly I think a lot of us you know barring, barring a few I'm not doing everybody a, a disservice but a few of us weren't in form or yeah. playing as well as we'd like the American team at the time felt like the Harlem Globetrotters pretty yeah. much. They're yeah. a very, very good team. And then I think um, most people had their mindset in that it was going to be a long, a long time of American like domination, if you like. And um, well, so, you showed them. You well, showed them it's not. Uh, from from that uh, perspective, and then from that point of view, I think we felt very like, you know, very happy that we uh, you know managed to get it back. I was there all week, and I was there on the sixteenth hole in the grandstand on the yeah. left and you stood down that tee and honestly I'm, I, how you were feeling I don't know I mean I was a few drinks in so I was kind of quite excited <laughs> you were good <laughs> you were good but I was I was, I wish so, I was a few drinks in. so so nervous and excited and like I'm proud of you like I'm still <laughs> on that tee and obviously I, we've had the opportunity to film together a few times and and I stood down that tee and I'm thinking or saw you on that tee and was seeing it on the big screen I'm like this is epic. When yeah. you looked around and that hole, that 16th, an iconic hole, the short par four. Wow. Yeah. So we actually played it about a, couple, a month or so before the Ryder Cup and we actually played with the course designer. Oh, did you? Yeah. And he was obviously uh, Dave Sampson uh, from European Golf Design and he was talking about how he felt like that hole was going to be the real iconic yeah. hole because it's risk reward. Yeah. I mean, most every, every single golfer went for it. There's no real point in kind of laying up massively. Uh, no, there was, there was no real other shot. I actually remember playing it. I played the Italian Open and I think um, it might have been 2021 um, and the they played it there's a tee like a lot further back and it was like a layup um we, i think we played two rounds of a layup and two rounds of a, of a drivable par four but at that point you could really see 16 17 18 15 as well like the back of the green the yeah, so what, what a finish like the Ryder cup was yeah. going to be uh so i think you knew then like it was going to be really cool and it's pretty certain 16 was going to be drivable all week for the Ryder cup it's just made for that so just explain it, and I'd, and I'd love to hear your you thought over that shot. You're there. You, you know at that point that your match is so incredibly important. Like, you you know at that point, <laughs> surely, if you win that hole, you potentially secure the Ryder Cup for Team Europe. Yeah. Is that right? Is that what you felt on that team? Uh, Did you know that at the time? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it was one of them things, I think, from, like, we, when we were warming up in the morning. So I actually said... So let's go a bit further back. I don't want to be boring, but... No, um, no, do. Listen, I want to not boring into like, this story. I, I remember saying to Claire on... Um, at some point on Saturday, so, so like... Uh, you know, as as players, or as European players anyway, we don't... We didn't really... You don't have a say in what position you go in or, or where you go. It was like, you know, Luke was very, very good at leading the team and... Um, he involved you where he felt like you would like to be involved but yeah. the rest of the time he took charge and everybody had their full trust in him I remember saying on Saturday to Claire I can't remember whether I was in the middle of play like what you know in between rounds or whether it was at the end of the day and I said I know where he's going to put me and I don't want to play there oh really um, well it's like it's just so the singles is a very strange 
feeling in the Ryder Cup because you just spent you've got all the build up and then you spend two full days where there's only um, uh, there's only four matches on a golf course yeah. at any given time 50, 60, 70,000 fans I know, so it's, it's crazy. like it's such a tight and then the singles you'll wake up and it's so spread out and um, but in particular like if you're not out sort of say one, two, three or one, two, three, four once you come to warming up it's like hardly anybody around all of a sudden oh, and it's so like really, the it's really, really really quiet drops off quite a bit and um and then you're out on the golf course and you're playing on your own all of a sudden it's a very, it's a very very different feeling and um and i'm gonna say i was like i know he's gonna put me out of the back so there's two things that are gonna happen either it's all over so then you're wandering around just mm. wanting to get in because mm. you just you, you've won and you'll want to celebrate or it's not over and like it's gonna have to come down to you and and it's not gone the way that we would like it in the singles and then you have like a an unexpected like pressure at the end so there's that, there's those two things that can happen really and i was like uh, i don't really want to be a part of that but um, so you'd have preferred to be in the first three groups um, i yeah I'd have, I'd have rather gone out a bit earlier yeah but i played i played 11 in whistling straits yeah and um and again like it it kind of your singles doesn't mean nothing like you still got pride in in your point and your result but I remember we spoke about it a few times with uh, Jordan I played Jordan Spieth in the singles at Whistling Straits and we were at 11 Ryder Cup was over and we just spent the 18 holes kind of like and as much as you try yeah it's just Mm. there's not like it's just very well, difficult to get it's, up to it if it's then, one side and it's finished by yeah, that point it's, you're it's thinking finished and, and we and you know and, and to be and to be fair it got to like 15 16 17 and we we're all square and the crowd were more around then because we we're at the end and then it got a bit more like you, you know a bit more intense but it, it's just like it, it was kind of over so that, so that was always a possibility um so does that does that spur you on that kind of crowd motivation that that almost i mean i see it as being almost pressure do you see it as almost being able to soak in that atmosphere from the crowd well i I think um i think whatever you do uh the crowd plays such a huge part in those moments and um i mean if you take if you take the the 16th for example um you know one of the greatest shots that i'll ever hit probably and one of the greatest moments i'll ever have in my career if there's not one person around, then it's not quite the same, is it? It's no, like, that's true. It's, so, that's true. So I think, um, I think for that, re- like for those reasons, the crowd plays such a big part in what are the memorable moments mm. and what are those. Yeah. So, so yeah, they they do they do play a, a, a huge part. Yeah. Just just on that moment though, like obviously it's t- to win the Ryder Cup, like that is massive in itself, and uh, like I said, a moment you'll never forget. But as a golfer, already with a great career, but. That must give you something moving forward, knowing you've been there in the biggest moment in <laughs> golf, and you've you've had all those millions of people watching and, and tens of thousands around the tee. That must be a, a nice feeling going forward, now uh, knowing you can do it on the biggest stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, so, I mean, I've honestly, I've never felt so sick on a golf course for uh, it, it. When you looked at the leaderboard, and and one of my like one of the things that came up in the team talk that night before was just don't you're going to look at the leaderboards you're going to look at that but don't um fall in love with whatever the scores are don't think that those scores are the be all and end all because actually in four balls once you get to the you know the scores if you're two or three up it's very very difficult to turn them around because yeah. it's generally going to take a birdie or probably more to win a hole in yeah. four balls so it's hard to change yeah. those scores so when you see them that looks like the real score but in singles yeah the bogey could win a hole Classic could win a hole, true, yeah. and then you can have a rapid turnaround so it's like don't really you know worry about the scores take care of your point and i remember looking at the board on like the seventh or eighth hole and it just there was something about it i don't know why but it was like it's gonna come down there was sh- it went shane me bob the, the back three i was looking at him and i was like it's likely not that it will, but it, it's all of a sudden it's looking more likely than it, it was could. getting so closer. Then, it's so then the you day it was getting and, and in, really close. And like in reality, in reality, I think we were always somebody was always going to get the point. Of course we were. But like 
not quite sure <laughs> and and you're like you just you just have to keep going and when it and when it does come down to potentially it's going to come down to one of you it, things start you know getting a bit more um nervy and there's pressure on and yeah i did feel like from about the eighth and ninth hole onwards felt very nervous and i remember trying to eat a was trying to eat a protein bar or something down 14 and i took one bite and i was like nah <laughs> this isn't gonna stay down so what, i'll just leave it what does nerves feel like to you uh it's a very good question. Like in a, in a way, like, like I like nerves of doing a Rick Shields podcast. Or like <laughs> no, of, you like, don't get bloody nervous. Look, no. But I think I think because on the outset you're so chilled and calm. I almost <laughs> can't ever envision you being nervous. But uh, you, either you mask it or hide it very well. But what what very like like what yeah? But what does it feel like to you? Because I, I obviously know it. Like I I get shaky hands. I can almost like my I can feel it with me. Is that the same with you? Yeah, I think you're. Um, you know, yeah. Your heart rate's going. Um, you're obviously, you know, very nervous. Like I could feel that one in the pit of my stomach, you know, yeah. throughout the whole mm. back nine. Um, you know, very, very nervous. And yeah, there's, you know, there's parts of you that are shaking and stuff. Uh, I, I think everybody might feel it in different ways, but I would say what comes with the nerves probably the same for everybody. Yeah. And, uh, and like, I mean, there's nothing else to do, is there? But I just, stand I just up when and I look, trust at yourself and. When I look at tour pros and I, and I see it in that amphitheatre, certainly around yeah. that 16th, I spent a lot of time on there enjoying myself, <laughs> looking down on, on the on the players and just thinking, they're bloody superheroes. Yeah, you're superhuman well. <laughs> because I, I can't. I think... I, you don't look real in that. Yeah. You like gladiators. And I know it was Rome. It was very kind of geared around that gladiator theme with the Colosseum. Around, I love that wrap around that first tee with the Colosseum, that kind of art uh, work. And again, I was on the first tee on the Friday. And, and just looking down, you're like, how? I can't comprehend how unbelievable you, or every single player does. Um, and I suppose that's hard work, it's dedication, it's all the hours you've put in in the past. But it almost seems like you're so chilled and relaxed and like, even like playing up to the crowd. Like, it's just, it's but, just awesome. But with that though, is that something that you've seen in your career where you might have been either an elite junior or when you first turned pro where there's guys who were great ball strikers, great golfers, but when it comes to handling those nerves under pressure, some people just almost melt and some people like yourself can, can take that energy and use it positively. Um. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, probably. I, I always think um, you know, there's obviously, like, levels throughout your career from a junior and everything that you continue to try and move up to. And um, I think the margins in golf are incredibly small, but I think the um, the amount of... I, I think it's probably... Um, something that's overlooked or underestimated. Like, I always think, you know, you look at the... FedEx Cup, for example, is is a very good example for me. So, out of the millions and millions and millions of people that play golf around the world, even you know, even in just America alone, mm -hmm. seventy people made the FedEx Cup finals this year. It it it's a ridiculously tiny, you know, minute amount of players that that would make them finals. Same on the, you know, on the DP World Tour. Um, how many people keep the card or how many people make, you know, the, the DP World Tour Finals. It's such a tiny amount. Uh, Ryder Cup, 12 on each team. It, mm. It's so, so small. So, um, there's obviously, you know, tiny, tiny things that will separate uh, from, you know, making that team or having an amazing season or, or whatever that is. And uh, whether that's, you know, something to do, you know, whether that's mental, whether that's... Um, I don't know the way that you you know people practice. Maybe that's a bit of luck. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, there's just it's just there's there's such tiny margins, um, and it's it's always difficult to put your finger on it. But of course, like um, you know, there's there's something there that that separates everyone. But what it is? Well, you've, you you guys have have got it. That's what <laughs> that's what you got. What was a better Ryder Cup for you? Paris or Rome? Or is that too hard? Is that like, uh, is that like saying which is your favourite child? Is that is that almost too hard of a question? <laughs> um, it's 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 a yeah. I mean, it's a tough one. I think you know different. Well, to be honest, all three of them for different reasons. Um, Paris was my first one. Such a special like time and opportunity for me. I, you know, Fran 
playing with somebody who was so close to me, getting off to that start. But you did so, you did unbelievable. We, you were, un yeah. were you undefeated in Paris. Uh, me and Fran were, I, I got hosed in the singles by oh. Tony Fino, but we don't, <laughs> don't remember. Um, you know, we won by, you know, a, a, a really big margin. Um, and it, it was it was so, so cool. I think Whistling Straits, for, for the tough, you know, for such a tough time that we had on the course, I think that we, for different reasons, again, we became so close off the course and we drew on what time, you know, what the positives were that week. Um, and it was amazing for, for that. So I think that, you know, that was great for many different reasons. And then this one obviously feels like very, you know, again, go back to the word satisfying, redemption, whatever it is, but felt like we did ourselves just this, this time. Um, and uh, from, from a, on a personal level, like having, um, I always think like whenever the Ryder Cup comes along, you see all, you always see the winning moments of those Ryder Cups and those shots. Um, like as if I was, you know, the one that got that opportunity out of everyone. It's ridiculous, um, it's so good. Like it's still kind of weird. Well, like I said, there was a couple of iconic shots. Obviously, your your drive into sixteen, uh, Rory's pitch on seventeen. Yeah, I know. Were you there for that shot? Filth. Uh, I I had such a poor view of it. I was really annoyed. I was like short right of the green, so I can't really see him. And then it's over. Like from us, there's a bunker at the front of the green, so I couldn't even see it. So like the guys <laughs> at the back and everything had an amazing view. All I've done is see it on TV. Um, yeah, but I think it even kick started with was it Victor Hovland whether he was one of the first groups out he chipped in on the first hole yeah I think it was the first group yeah, out and then you suddenly uh, think yeah. oh my god I know I'll, I'll it just set the scene didn't it right straight away um, excited about Luke Donald being announced as captain again for in two years time yeah um, yeah I think he's uh, I think he's perfect um, and I just think um, I think a lot was made of um, like the landscape of the European Ryder Cup team changing th this this time, uh, it the, not necessarily the actual team that was lined up to play, but I think you look at um, the the team, the vice captains, and, and everything. Uh, what people would have expected two years ago, it was clearly very different. And I think effectively, like when I made the team in Paris feel like you're walking into that era of Ryder Cup legends and mm. uh, you know you're walking into that team and that and they were going to be here for a long time through yeah. vice captains to captaincy and I think just with that the way things have been and, and that changing and the landscape changing of the team I think the continuity of um, Luke who's been unbelievably successful and, and then the team that will be around him um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of similarities there. I think it was definitely the right thing to do for us. Well, he kind of got subbed in as captain after Henrik Stenson being kind of stripped yeah. of captaincy. So I, f I feel like he needed a full run at it mm. as well. Like, yeah, I, I mean, feel like he, he, for himself, he needed that. No, you're fully captain. This, you know, yeah, it's, it's I, all yours this yeah, time. Yeah, and I think uh, like him, him and Diane, like unbelievable job they did. He spoke so well. We had so much, like respect for him and he and he owned the room when he was in it um diane was amazing um and i just think yeah like i think it's it's harsh that people might look at him as being subbed in for that one because um i think when the Ryder cup captain selection was going on i think he was very close to getting it yeah. i think it was very like 50 50 yeah. almost between him and henrik so um I'm sure it hurt when he didn't get it, and then I know he would hate to think yeah. that that people would see it as that way. But look at the job he did with half a term to oh, try and get things Unreal. right. So um, you know, for him to just kind of continue, and I mean, like if if we if the team happened to happens to win in Beth Page Black, that, it's got one of the best Ryder Cup legacies of all time. Like it'll be amazing. Do, do you find them with the Ryder Cup? Obviously, golf is such an individual sport you know you know that about anybody growing up it's on your own there's some levels of team element for your county or for your country the Ryder Cup is the pinnacle of that do you find that then moving you know you you, you find relationships and friendships through the Ryder Cup that kind of last throughout tour life then that you become close to people from that that week yeah you, you definitely um for the most part like um you, you obviously have your 
your friends that'll be you know on tour that you travel around with that you that you're super close with and mm-hmm. that you've grown up with um but i do think like when you've played when you've been in a, a Ryder cup team with the players um there's a there's a bond that you all have um that lasts you know you know that you've um like gone into battle together essentially yeah. and um you know what you've been through that week it's it sounds daft look I understand like we're only playing like golf but it's it's so intense and it means so much and there's so much for, for us as Europeans I think we take a massive responsibility of carrying the legacy that's been going on for a long time and I, and I think it means so much to us so when you've done all that together there's definitely bonds that stay I mean yeah. I've, I've been to I've been very lucky to be to a number a lot of really big golf events this year the masters the open but the Ryder cup is just as a fan it's, yeah it's, it's different. different it is as a fan yeah, like every I shot mean, matters yeah and 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 every shot from the team you support in you like every every time you look to the tv or you look to the golf course it's like please go in please go in please go in yeah yeah but the open sometimes if it's the third hole on a friday it's like mm. well it doesn't matter if that's yeah, go of in. Course, yeah, like yeah. you're not as passionate about every single yeah, golf yeah. shot it definitely possibly. seems to appeal as well more to the casual fan like i have friends who are like semi into golf who'll maybe watch the open the masters and that's maybe it but then when the rider cup comes around they're absolutely well behind yeah, it. it just seems to always yeah. make more sense 100 well it's it's um i think by far when it comes around it's the biggest sport in like occasion yeah. in the world so uh, for us that are European or American and the ones that managed to, you know, again, make the team, like to have the chance to play, um, you know, all the majors are on a world stage and all golf's on a world stage, but the Ryder Cup is levels above that in terms of how it's viewed. Yeah. And, um, and then, and the noise factor of the crowds, uh, like you say, every shot seems, you know, like <sighs> so fist pumping good. on the first is something yeah. that very, very, very rarely happens. And I would say like that Friday morning, that Friday morning when you wake up um, and you sort of head into the golf club and you're getting ready, um, there's nothing comes close to it in terms of like the intensity levels of what you feel and like the um, the sort of silence in the in the air, like in the locker yeah. room and the tension and you put in, you know, when you put in your shirt on and stuff and you look around the room, like it's very, very cool. What's, uh, what's Beth Page going to be like? What's New York 2025 going to look, look like? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see, won't we? There's, um, it'll be a challenge, that, that's for sure. I, uh, I really, really like everyone. I, you know, you can already already look at it. It's two years away. Put it down as a two-year goal to try yeah, and make that team, and I would love to be there. Uh, playing in as part of the team, but I'm sure it, I'm sure the uh, like New York crowds will make oh, it. Um, pretty hostile environment Rick will be there though cheering you on in the 16th exactly that's Rick. all we need <laughs> what's your favourite Tommy Chant because you've got some absolute cracking oh, Ryder Cup chants but one that I can't actually say on, on air is that your favourite yeah yeah it's a good one, it? I'm, I'm sure you won't like that one. Uh, but, <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> um, I, I love, I mean, the, the class, like, Tommy, 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 yeah. Tommy, Tommy. And it's, Tommy. it's just like, there's so many. I mean, uh, that Sunday night, so I went uh, down into the fan zone on that Sunday night. There was a concert on, I can't remember who it was DJ now, but it, the atmosphere was just electric. And I was into, into one of the bars till almost the closing. And it, it, it seems that you just do not expect to see it's a room full of predominantly men, but like literally chanting your name. <laughs> like, Why like, would you not expect to see that? <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely a wall. It was crazy. I was at one point in a bean, a massive bean bag, right? Love a bean bag, being tossed up into the air, <laughs> and like my sunglasses got broken, uh, all sorts. And it's just, it's like you. I don't, I don't know as a player because obviously you don't get to see I don't know as a player if you if you really truly 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 understand how much it means to fans uh, no you, you actually probably don't and I, and um, again like um, for the you know the week of the Ryder Cup for example um, we're very much uh, like you see us playing in front of you know all the, the biggest crowd we'll ever play in front of but um, we're very much in a bubble like the whole mm. week like you're, you're with the team um, you know you the stuff that you do on the range or on the course is obviously in front of everybody that's there um when you finished you know you might 
you know, eat something or get a drink. You might stay in the locker room and have a teen talk, or you might do that. Luke might do it back at the hotel, but then you're in a car, you leave, you go to the hotel, you change in your hotel room and you go down to the team room, you're with your team and, and our, you know, partners, um, go to bed, wake up the next day, you do it the same. So you, you're very much, very much in a bubble. Like you don't, yeah. you don't get all of that stuff. I to tell you what, if, honestly, if, if any player, it wouldn't be it wouldn't you wouldn't get through it with safety precautions but if any player turned up at one well, of those yeah. bars on that sunday night i mean it would it was already going off it would be absolutely crazy um is it interesting question where how would you deem the success of 2023 to be for you personally and, and career um from a uh so if if you look at it um like i would look at it in two or three different ways but from a results uh perspective uh, very good without um, without winning this year on an indiv- on an individual basis, um, and you know that would be something that you would look at. That yeah, you'd be disappointed. Of course, everybody on the planet wants to win more, and uh, you know without question, I don't win anywhere near as much as I would like or feel like I might have the opportunity to do so that might not happen forever I might win more than my first share yeah. coming up and I always try and keep a positive spin on that um, because when I look at it from a performance standpoint from a consistency standpoint and where the level of my game was at I think it's been um, arguably this year as high as any of my um, I always class like 17, 18, 19 were my you know best years and I think this year I played easily to a level that was as high as those. So when I look at the performances and, and the consistency of my game and how I felt on the golf course, I see that as a massive positive and I'm, re- and I'm very, very happy with that and want to continue that. So, um, and plus you add to that, I think um, the Ryder Cup was unbelievably special time, moments that I'll, that I'll have forever. The Open at Hoylake um, ended up being, you know, very very sad finish for, for me in the end the way it went but I, I look back at the feeling that I had on the first tee in front of my home crowd um, the first round leading the open after the first round going out last in the open on Saturday in my home in you know one of my home opens um, the way I played that week where I felt like I was probably um, under you know as much pressure as you know anybody else being at home and stuff so did, there was did a it lot feel of more pressure than the birthday open um uh in a in a way yeah i think um probably uh, probably more pressure but at the same time i think i was more experienced this time mm, to yeah. to handle it and i felt a lot more prepared um because so, where, where the Birkdale Open, you actually started badly in the first round, didn't you? I shot a semi hit, yeah. But then, shot, clock, yeah. but then did incredible to make the yeah. cut pretty much on the number, right? Yeah. Where this time round, you're obviously, your expertise and your experience had really yeah. shone through the fact you were leading the Open yeah. after the first round. Yeah, like, I, you know, I, I was playing well. Um, and I did. I started off pretty nervy that on that Thursday. Um, and I didn't really hit a decent golf shot until about the 5th. And around that fifth, sixth, seventh, I started to get into the round a bit more, started to like calm down. And then I played really well and got on a good run and, and put it well. Um, so, and then, and then sort of found my way into the tournament quite well. And honestly, um, that week, particularly Friday, struggled towards the back end of the round, did well to finish with the, uh, the where I did, got myself into the last group. And then Saturday, Sunday, I played really, really, really well and uh, putting let me down I didn't particularly put badly couldn't get the ball in the hole and it just felt hard yeah. from there and it's you know like what it what it's like on link screens is you get days where you just look at the putt you don't even line it up and you hit it towards the hole and everything looks like it's going to go in and I had a weekend where I felt like I couldn't hole anything and I, I played so so well and I was really happy with how I played and I just couldn't make advances on Brian who, who did you know un, unreal and then uh finish you know uh it's over the back on 17 and made a triple but like you know very close again to having um 
my joint best finish in a major and it was at the home one so there was a lot of amazing things about that that I, just, that I took from it just just on that though we hear you might have even said this last time we interviewed you but we hear a lot from tour pros that you know you try and treat majors the same as any other tournament you go into it with the same mindset and I kind of get that from a kind of consistency standpoint but it must feel different the open few units in the northwest it has uh, to yeah, yeah it is I think um, like I, th I think um, you do try and treat them the same in terms of um yeah preparation uh what you do week in week out uh when you get uh, you know when you get on the golf course play your game stay in the present focus on all the things that you do that, that you should do that sort of lead to the success that you have in any normal week um but there's no getting away that they are different mm -hmm. um particularly like a home open you know what's coming but i think if you as long as you're honest with yourself and you prepare for that like i you know very aware or actually I say very aware of what's going to be you hope that it's going to be what you think it is because mm. if I went to the first tee and there was nobody around or nobody <laughs> was supporting me I'd be like this is shocking like, um, <laughs> what have I done so, <laughs> um, so like you, um, so prepare for that like there's going to be a lot of people there's going to be a lot of noise there's a lot of expectation on you you're going to be nervous you're going to want to try harder because mm. of how much it means to you and if you uh, like I, I like writing things down so like I would write all that down and then I would you know on the other side I would obviously look at how I feel like I should tackle that or um, and if, if I've got that and I've got a plan in my mind then I feel very much I feel very much more prepared and then mm -hmm. go out because um, in my experience maybe not everyone's like this but those things crop up um, and I might have started for instance in the open I might start a birdie 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 and I'd you know my expectations my emotion would have shot through the roof mm. um, and equally I could have started bogey 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 and then want to try unbelievably hard and get disappointed yeah. or something so um, being ready for all those kind of scenarios in a week that means so much to you uh, that things will be more difficult to like do things that you do every week like stay in the present or yeah. you know react well or whatever if you're prepared for them then it then it's, it's almost like a risk assessment like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think so yeah yeah. Like, in a way, yeah you need to know all the crazy out outputs that might yeah, happen yeah. you know for example if you go and double the first right what's my what's my plan then yeah if yeah if I start birdie 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 what's yeah. my strategy then yeah and on like a normal uh, you know I'm not putting any other tournament down but on a normal week I think you, you know you play very regularly so you're playing 30 events a year say on a normal week you'll do those things pretty naturally yeah. um, you understand that there's 72 holes in a tournament and um, you kind of I, I always kind of see my career as a, a big long thing so like any hole doesn't you might get up and down in the moment but overall I know deep down I'm you know it's one hole out of tens of millions of holes oh, that exactly. I'll probably play so like I'm, I'm kind of all right about it reacting of course in the, at the time you'll get angry or you'll get upset um, but I feel like I'm pretty good at, you know, reacting deep down and, and getting back to it. But just in, in those ones where they mean a lot. And, and not to bring up any any <laughs> sticky situations this year, is there one particular shot that you could wish you could retake this year? Uh, um, and and how, do, how do you deal with that? Do you, do you put it so far back in the memory that it doesn't I think, mean um, anything? If I could actually take one shot back... Um, it it would be um, potentially the um, tee shot off the last in the Canadian Open. Yes, was that in, in regulation play? That was the. It's a bit of an odd hole, that though, isn't it? It was only an, it was an iron off the tee that then left you like a five wood in or yeah. something. Um, and um, it's it's a strange one. So that week, uh, probably the closest I got to winning all year. Because you birded, you I had birded a, a 16, incredible 17. run, didn't you? And then then you got 16, to, 17 to go joint leader and you're on a par five um, easily reachable obviously with an iron in your hand off the tee to hit the fairway and a birdie wins the tournament that week I was actually struggling with my swing a bit really um, and I, I started the week and I was hitting it really poor I was really really struggling um, spent quite a bit of time on the range having to go through like some different feels to just feel like I could get it going and I didn't play particularly amazing in the first round and was just sort of steady away and then I had a really good third round shot eight under I think in the third round and I ended up in the last group and then played pretty good in the final round but I actually um, led putting that week 
uh, for the tournament. Wow. Um, but interestingly enough, like on a week where I didn't feel like I was swinging my best, was the week where you put it really I, well. I put it really well. <laughs> and I, was, it. I was, you know, stood in the last with needing a birdie to win, um, and. Um, I'd probably take that shot back, but it was one of them where it was the same thing I've been struggling with all week. I had like, it's getting a bit quick from the top and stuff, and then a little bit nervous on the last, got a bit quick on a five, yeah. I missed the fairway, um, end up making par and then going into a playoff. You're in a course, really like, tricky sl slot on the right hand side yeah, where you're on that hole. Yeah. Um, did you go, you, uh, you didn't go five or did you? No, I, I put five wood down and um, the line in, in my, well, in my defense, I am useless at the rough. Um, and uh, you, when you say that, I'm useless out of the rough. Uh, I, had a, you, I had a lesson off Rory at the Ryder Cup out of rough. No really. way, I did, yeah, because um, the rough was really thick there, and I know Rory's very good out of it. And we were playing a practice round, and I asked him to help me out there. Well, it's the one week a year you can ask he, for help, yeah. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, so like, um, I'm obviously quite a shallow player, like, yeah. I, and um, I get in rough, and I, I try. I either hit a big smother left or a big choppy cut thing that goes like nowhere no right. Rick, and I'm always wondering. Today, get in the rough today. I'm, all, I'm always wondering. Like I watch people out the rough and I'm like, they make it look so easy or they're so good out of it. So I, I asked Rory to help me. Uh, but anyway, back to Canada. Like I looked at the lie. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have probably gone for it. And I just looked at it. I thought I'm going to hit this like 40 yards. Yeah. Um, so I went to lay up and I was wedging it great and I was putting great. So just lay it up in the fairway. Mm and like wedge it on give yourself put for it lo and behold use the side rough carved it into the more rough on a oh. tail up over there and the next up, shot was really hard the yeah third shot. a great shot there actually yeah. um a great shot and a great put ended up making five um but yeah probably that t-shirt would be one that when it bad. comes to, to bad shots though everyone listening who obviously plays golf have all hit bad shots have all missed a pot on the last that was going to be for our best ever score how much then do you kind of go away and either like to just try and forget about it just move on it's one shot at a time or do you kind of look back and think what could have done better like how do you move on from from bad shots i'm um, sure a lot of people listening want that kind of help th there's there's like i suppose there's a bunch of different like ways you can do it i would say um you, you kick the golf bag now this is the rick shields you, approach you, throw the club forward, fall out with throw your the club forward <laughs> blame the caddy i'll blame Finno. uh kick the bag um uh so one thing I could be better at, for instance, is probably self-talk. Uh, you know, I don't talk to myself particularly great all the time, but um, like I'm all right at moving on. Like, mm. um, and um, I just think, like for me, um, when when I tee off on the first, I know that I'm going to play 18 holes. So while I'm out for those 18 holes, I'm going to have to do it every shot anyway. Mm. Either trying it a good one or like. You know, don't be yeah. um, uh, Nice one. Uh, so, uh, um, so that's just that's just how that's what I sort of try and tell uh, my kids. For instance, you know, everybody's going to get frustrated and angry. You're going to hit bad shots. And again, like there's things that I can I, I can obviously do better. Uh, but I do know when I come to every shot, like in my mind, I'm out there for five hours. Um, so while I'm out there, you know, hit every shot to the best of your ability and then like figure it out afterwards or something. So that's just, that's how I've always looked at it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think, you know, every, everybody's different, but that's just, that's just my mindset. So that gives me like the clarity that I will just, you know, try on the next shot and I'll. Just, just on that, you mentioned your kids then. I know you said earlier on kind of off camera how much they're loving golf and getting yeah. into golf. Do you still love golf like you did when you were a kid? Yeah, I love golf, yeah. Really? Yeah. Even though it's your job and you're playing so much, you still... Um, I'm Tommy Fleetwood and I love golf. <laughs> I'm Tommy Fleetwood and I love... Uh, is that normal? It's absolutely, is that normal for a tour pro? Does some guy see it as a job? I know um, it's such a great job well, and you're I, so fortunate, it, but... You know, the... I, I suppose from a professional level, like, golf is my job. Um, like, it is It is a job. It's yeah. a career. And um, there's, there's, there's... I think I have to be... There's when it comes to like when I'm working or I'm at a tournament or you know I'm practicing before I go to a tournament say um, you have to be very disciplined and I have to work on the exact things that I know I want to work on um, and get right and what I'm trying to improve on at any given time and that's one side of it that, that's my job side of it mm -hmm. and trying to um, chase my dreams and you know make the most out of my career for as long as I can I, I will have it as my career 
and then I also think the other side is um, I love the game of golf like mm. I love playing with my kids I love playing with my mates I love um, I love going um, on a chipping green or a pitching area and messing around mm. and trying different things I love um like maybe not today because it's a very important match, oh, huge but match. I uh, I could go out and play golf today and shoot a hundred and be just as happy. Like it doesn't bother me one bit. Wow. Um, I'll just enjoy going around and messing around a golf course. Well, because you know that's not you know that you can play really good golf as well. Well, so. yeah, and and I just you know I um, I just don't care if I'm playing and it doesn't matter. Like I just enjoy hitting golf shots or trying something or something, and I, and I do enjoy the game. I do enjoy the game for that and I enjoy anybody I enjoy spending time with people that love the game you know like uh, like golf has been my life for um, such for as long as I can remember Forever. since I was I look at Frankie now who's six he reminds me a lot of me when I was that age and I was just getting into the game and I yeah. loved it it was always my favourite thing to do and um, but yeah I mean you look at it now and like I obviously live here and I will it, it's bizarre that I would come to the Tommy Fleetwood Academy in practice like and I have something that is like important to me but I one of my main goals really is that everybody it, it's like creating the best environment for you to grow in or yeah. um, uh, and that's like one of my main goals you must be really proud as we sit here at the Tommy Fleetwood <laughs> Academy I mean that that must be really really satisfying uh, for you it's it's cool yeah I, I do uh, I do love it and it was um wasn't necessarily always something that I had as a dream or a goal, but I, I guess as I, and I'm still not old, by the way, I'm still like relatively young, but I think um, for, for a while now, I sort of, everything, I always feel like everything that I learn in the game is for my, like it is for myself, but then I kind of want to use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because I have kids as well and they're, into the, they're into the game, so I want them to improve, but everything I learn kind of want to pass on or the certain beliefs that I will get that, and everybody forges their own like mindset or beliefs and it'll be from their own experiences. So I've had good and bad experiences that I've learned from every time and then I'll just try and make them work in like in an academy in, in, in like setting. But like I say, at, at evenings here, they were saying it's like 200 kids down here practicing. It's very, uh, yeah, it is very cool. It's like, such and a, you're inspiring them. Uh, maybe you are of course you are <laughs> they get yeah. to they get yeah. to spend time you're here and they get to spend time and they might get to come have a picture with you or that you sign a heart and they'll look up to you as a, as a real role model not only here but at form behold back at home where you've also got another golf academy i think you'll whether you underestimate I, I don't think you should underestimate your inspiration on young talent who are, who are growing up in the game because as much as yes you are still young but you've achieved so much mm. i think so many young kids will look up to you and go i want to be tommy fleetwood <laughs> oh, that'd, be, that'd be nice hopefully they they're hopefully they're better than me well hopefully yeah, you've done all right but like, <laughs> like that must be really cool to see it and you never know in next 10 years you know there might be an, a superstar that comes out uh, of the tommy that, fleetwood well, academy that, that would be yeah that would be a bit of a that would be that would be a dream i've said that a few times but, but um being able to play on tour like against or with like somebody that came out came through that would be cool the academy would be like that would be amazing i mean we've seen it with like faldo series back in the day and i'm sure you you played in faldo series didn't you back in the day as I well i chopped it around the faldo series a couple of times yeah <laughs> but like even that back in the, is there to inspire young talent yeah yeah absolutely and obviously faldo seeing success from young talent coming through and becoming a tour player yeah. and stuff now as well so i'm, I'm excited to see what happens well, from from young talent well, coming out of Tommy Fleetwood Academy. I would be surprised if there is. I mean, this place, I knew today when we came here, Tommy Fleetwood Academy, it was going to be good. Your name's on it, it's going to be good. I'll be honest, hands up, it's better than I thought it would be. <laughs> there's two gyms, there's Thanks. obviously an amazing putting green short game uh, area, range. Like this literally, I said before, this is like, it, may, it would make you feel like a tour pro for the day coming here. Yeah, it's got everything like, you'd need and more. We do, we do have like, um, we do have an unbelievable facility. I think um, we have eight, pros and two trainers I think and wow. it's more um, like from a day to day standpoint and, and, and for the for the kids and the people that come here everybody that comes here the those guys are the ones that you know the pros are giving them the day to day experience and I think we do have an amazing team here so we're very very lucky like very passionate always learning uh, great personalities and like I say like from, from my belief from an academy I'm not a coach and I never I never will be a coach uh, but um like I've always 
looked for more in my career and I've always um, there's always something that you find that works for you or that you believe in that you think works universally and I think the environment um, you know the environment the mindset the you know the lessons the discipline and the people that surround the place are all like you know such important things and that's kind of like my impact on it if you like that's what I try and leave and then the pros are so good that, that you know they just take care of everything else and who knows it might be little Frankie Fleetwood uh, Frankie's yeah Frankie's doing well he's got uh, he's very very good um, I uh, yeah hopefully you get a chance to have a chipping comp against him or I'd something like that be one winner there. He, uh, <laughs> he, he, he literally he barely hits a golf ball on the range he's not that interested in hitting golf balls but he can hit it forward so at six that's about enough yeah. and then he's chipping and putting it's really good so I would love to see a uh, Rick Shields, no, he'll uh, batter me. What? Um, <laughs> how are you coping with that? So I've I've got three kids as well. <laughs> I'm trying to get them into golf. I'm trying to get them encouraged, and and they're, they're definitely intrigued about golf. I wouldn't say they're, they're dead into it just yet. Um, we've not got, quite got a Tommy Fleetwood Academy where where we live just at the moment. I think I think moving to the Bayern is fine. How are you managing that kind of relationship with your, even getting your kids involved? Are you um, quite. I'm guessing he's seen what you've achieved and wants to do what Dad does. Yeah, I think um, so. Oscar and Mo, the two older boys, they play very like into the game, very passionate about it. I obviously play, um, and I think Frankie just ends up has ended up wanting to just hang around with us and doing what yeah. we want. But it's almost turned into uh, at, this is what when I say he reminds me a lot of me. He'll come home from school, so he gets home from school at three, three thirty or something, and he wants to go to the academy. He wants to just come and hang out and practice his golf like chip and putt and he gets so much joy out of it that all my job really is is to just stay out of the way yeah um, <laughs> like i'll you know um i'll have a chipping comp with him and stuff and and put and then uh, you know i'll take him out onto the course and we'll play some holes i'll just tee him off where i think he can reach the green in regulation um but it's like as long as he is enjoying it um I mean, he's six years old. Like, oh, no. I mean, what else is Perfect. there to do? Like, just make sure he enjoys it. Like, don't yeah. get in his way. And um, and it's it's actually amazing watching. He's had like a handful of lessons um, hitting it on the range with Dermot, one of the pros here. Loves Dermot and like loves his lessons. But the rest of the time, he never has like um, he's never had a chipping lesson, never had a putting lesson. It's amazing how good they can get by either just watching or clearly just doing it. Well, they just mirror. It's it's actually amazing because um, I'm, I'm sure back in the day when it was Tiger's dad, he used to swing, whether he was left-handed or there was a story around him mirror, being left-handed. That yeah. was Mickelson's dad. Was it Mickelson's dad? Yeah. So that was right. So Mickelson was left-handed because he would almost mirror his dad, yeah, who was right-handed. Go, yeah. So he would go, almost yeah. be looking at dad swinging. He go, okay, so I'm going to copy his dad that almost. Dad yeah, his dad was <laughs> a good player. Um, but yeah, it's it's amazing what they pick up just by like just watching. Um, I, I'm. Yeah. Was this the same kind of upbringing that you had as a kid? Did, did you... And, and it, With, without the uh, Tommy Fluter camera. Without, obviously. <laughs> without the sunshine. Um, but like, um, were, without were you, sunshine, yeah. Were you kind of... Did you pick it up naturally? Were you kind of encouraged into it? Did you feel like... Because I think sp- professional sports people often have to be encouraged and, and if to some degree pushed yeah, yeah. by parents to, to reach their potential. Yeah. Was that kind of the upbringing you had? Uh, yeah, I'd say pushed in, pushed in like um, pushed in certain aspects. I think I never needed. Um, I, I do think most things uh, for the very like elite performers or the ones that go a long way. I, I think everything has to come from like inside. Everything has to be internal in terms of um, your desire and your discipline. And um, I got like for me again. I loved the game then. I love the game now. Um, I, I, you know, I always wanted to go to the range. I always wanted to play golf. I always wanted to go chipping and putting, and I st- and I still do now. And I don't need anybody to give me a push. Like no. nobody needs to tell me to go and practice an extra hour or two. Yeah. Like they need to tell me to stop if anything. Yeah. And I needed that then when I was a kid, if you like. Um, but I got pushed in. Um, I got pushed in, like always trying my hardest having the right attitude um being respectful if you like i got pushed um 
my dad hated mistakes like um like but like daft mistakes he, he always understood bad shots and he would never get angry about a bad shot but if there was something i could avoid by thinking correctly or yeah, thinking a straight miss put or something a tap like in and he uh or he trying would, a ridiculous he would get, shot yeah he would get really frustrated at it so i got pushed in in those in those things but um again i never needed to get pushed in how hard you know or wanting to go the golf um and i think like i obviously look at frankie for an example he's six and he doesn't he doesn't need that but i uh there's 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 always an element of pushing and then there's there's different um different obstacles or different distractions that get in the way and i think when it gets to probably teenagers um you know like for what i think sort of if you look at i would always look at uh, tiger woods or um i watched the david beckham documentary yeah. recently and you know it's very easy to look at david beckham and think he's like the coolest human on the planet yeah and he, he said very clearly in the thing he said going out wasn't for me no. never wanted to party never wanted to do this i wanted to go and practice i wanted to hit free kicks and stuff and like it's understanding that those people that you might look up to did things that you wouldn't that you don't see Correct. or things that you you might you know other friends might think you're lame for doing yeah. and stuff like that and i think at that point you just need kind of pushing uh, to do that and then you know I think it was like the king, sorry the king richard film yeah the, the, the williams serena, sisters. serena williams yeah. uh, the williams sisters and that kind of showed the discipline you've yeah, got yeah. you've got serena williams you've got like lewis hamilton's dad you've yeah. got tiger woods dad who who have seemed to like have almost over pushed it's to like some a protective degree. it's like a protective parent that can see uh you know that can see a bigger picture and, yeah. I, and I guess as as a as a young adult or a kid you don't see that as easy um or you can it's very easy to have a dream it's very easy to have a vision but actually do the things that in the long term will yeah you know, i think sometimes as well you see like some of these kind of pushy parents they're trying to live a dream through the child that they couldn't ever dream i think someone like yourself who's so successful you've dream, dreaming your own dream that the child then can just kind of look at that as inspiration just enjoy it like you know that'd be nice that'd yeah. be nice i think you know of course like you're going to get things right and wrong as a as a as a parent and there's plenty of stuff i'm sure i get wrong and, and right but you know all you it's our first time in it you're only trying your best and you're only doing what it's you bloody, think is right it's bloody right. hard, like, it's, hard. It's, it's, hard. it's the hardest job in the world just leave everything to mum it'll be fine <laughs> um, well how do you feel or think about professional golf the state of professional golf right now it's it's a good question because um, there's lots of changes since we last did a podcast two years there's ago there's lots of changes there's I mean, lots there's, of changes um, uh I mean, look, the, there's still, uh, there's a lot of tournaments. Um, there's four majors that uh, are career defining every mm. year still. Um, there's a lot of money knocking around. And, um, you know, there's, an, there's amazing players and amazing golfers uh, to play against um, wherever you are. Yeah. Do you think the money's good for the game? Well, it's, it's good if you're making it. Well, that's it. <laughs> um, if you're one of the players, don't get me wrong. It, yeah, like it's um, it's hard to ever say that money is uh, is 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 bad for the game. And I'm a professional golfer. Like who, like, I can't say uh, money is um, bad for the game because I'm one of the ones that's actually making it. Um, like uh, I don't like I don't know as. Uh, like for me being a I am ultimately kind of a, a purist in terms of my dreams are still the same I still want to try and be the best golfer in the world at some point even if it was for a day and I you know the open is still uh, I'm still chasing the open and and that and um, those are my dreams and as a purist that's kind of what I believe in and, it, and again it's still it's probably easy for me to say when I'm financially okay and and things are fine and i'm like very settled um you know other people might say well you don't know what you're talking about like it's, it's, it, it's just it's just one of those things and i think you can only ever make your own individual decisions and choices mm. and whatever anybody else does i mean um i'm not i'm not gonna leave one ounce of sleep on whatever anybody else does no. like i'm still on my journey and i think that's just what everybody kind of should focus on like their own life how do you think it's all going to pan out 
What do you, what do you think the next five years going to look like for professional golf? Uh, it's going to be a different ball. Uh, oh, yeah. That. That's um, Christ. Um, that's a different, that's another topic. And uh, I don't know. I, I mean, look, I, golf as a game is still is growing. Yeah. Like massively. Um, and I think the opportunities are. I can't imagine the opportunities becoming less. Mm. Like I feel like there's there's going to continue to be more and more opportunities, more and more um, growth in the game in both in both sides of the game. Uh, like you know, amateur and professional. Um, what the tours will look like? Who has any idea? Because that changes that changes what, like daily. What do you want it to look like? What would be your um, What would be your blue sky scenario um, of, of, of professional golf in five years? Do you want everyone back together? Do you think it can happen? Any anything seems possible. Um, is it a bad answer for say like I don't really? No, no. Well, I don't uh, think any of us know. No, no. But I was going to say I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, I, I, not that I don't care, but it's that um, it's that out of my realm of yeah. Uh, you know, I've had no part in any of the decision making nor do I want it by the way you I don't. have no and I without sounding like I'm sitting on the fence I have very little like opinion on what's on what's going on except for I know the opportunities that I have and I know where I'm going to be playing like the rest I mean like as for I'm you know I'm in a position where Whatever the decisions are made, I'm going to look at where is best for me to become the best golfer I can possibly be, and where's best to chase my dreams still. And until that changes, like I'm just going to take the decisions as they come and look it, at that. It's probably something that's more the fans, almost in a way that I think from a fan's perspective, well, we want to uh, see yeah. the best players playing against each other, which we get obviously in the major championships. Yeah, absolutely. And and there's players that, like I say, that that's that's my choice, that's my yeah, decision, yeah. and that's how I you know look at it everybody looks at it differently and I don't mind how anybody yeah, yeah. looks at the game and what is best for their careers and what's best for their family or what they want to do where they want to play that's that's for them um, and, and everybody's going to do everybody's going to do their own thing and mm -hmm. do what they think is right and, and that's you know again like I don't want to give an answer that's like no, it's, sitting it on the fence sense. but that is literally genuinely what I believe and how I spend my life thinking well it's, it's like when, you know you say you look at that I won't name individuals but you look at some guys who have gone to live and where they were in their career and what they had achieved or hadn't achieved and you think you can't blame I, you know you can't I personally couldn't sit here and say that's a stupid mistake when they've got yeah, yeah. set up for life and you know whatever but who knows it's it there's a lot of discussions ongoing um you know, I just I just feel like as a, as a fan and people who I just don't know if it's in the best spot right now and I don't and I can't see an end to it and that's kind of frustrating yeah you know? yeah yeah and, and I, you know what I worry about the most Tommy as well with all this and not that you need as professional golfers don't need to worry I just don't want our sport to look greedy yeah I, I, I know I know and um, look, I, there's there's going to be numbers that are thrown around they've, they've already you know numbers have already been thrown out around there and, and there's going to be more I'm sure it's a bit daft in it yeah. <laughs> like yeah. they're, they're unbelievable amounts but who are we to like say that that's you know if see i look at it two ways because <laughs> i i get what you're saying and it's you know you don't want golf to be seen all about money we know football the premier league now it's all about money but at the same time if there's a lot of money in golf it, they have to make that money by advertising and you'd like to think they want to try and push in the game out globally yeah. to more eyeballs it has to pay for itself as long so, for me as long as it filters down if somehow it filters down yeah. to, to grassroots level to get more people yeah. into the game, so it actually benefits yeah, the yeah. whole of game, not just yeah. lying in the pockets of, of select individuals. Um, but again, I've, I've said this from the from day one. I fully agree that professional golfers should earn as much money as physically possible because you deserve it. You're unbelievably talented. I get that. It's just I think now it's become at the forefront of people's minds yeah. the money element. Like any time yeah, someone yeah. wins, it's the first thing you see now. Yeah, sometimes yeah, it's not course. about the score yeah. it's not about the trophy it's not about it's yeah, like the first thing you yeah. see now is how many millions well, yeah. of tours though yeah, against of, each other of course and like and it's and it's one of those things um, you know it's um, like a, a businessman it's their job to make as much money as possible and um, as a golf purist it's your job to try and be the best golfer you can yeah. be um, if the two are lying great 
you know some you know is it going to turn that there's you try and do one or the other i don't, I don't know but um and again like you say as long as it comes down as, as somebody that believes in the game so much and that loves the game um the more people that can get into the game for whatever reason and benefit from friendships from health from enjoyment from yeah. something to focus on from the disciplines that they'll learn from the game then the better you know definitely for me, so i think with the money though as well it's a short-term story it might be a headline for a day but like i don't know how much cameron smith won when he won the open don't care all i'm thinking of yeah. is he won the claret jug at the 150th in front but of I'm the saying, old i, in, I the think old it's course. only majors that still have that potentially i don't think yeah. a lot of other tournaments have that anymore but i think that again so i think that becomes down to the how many events there are if there was fewer events that all mean a lot more yeah yeah you know like the players obviously mean so much etc etc i think it's just the scheduling as well there's so many events as a fan it becomes hard to know like well what's this week or oh, that's not that big of an event or but then rory's in dubai and it gets confusing but mm -hmm. i think it will have to change won't it what do you want to be remembered for in 10 years or even longer than 10 years Let's say you're coming to the end of your career, okay? You're hanging up your uh, your golf shoes. You, you're about to to retire from the game. What what do you want to be remembered for? Um, I'd like to be somebody that um, I'd like to get somewhere to feeling like I reached my potential. Um, I uh, there's look there's like I said I've got my dreams that I would love to achieve. Um, and I'll never run away from them, and I'll be chasing them the whole time. The Open and World Number One. Uh, yeah, like I, like those are you know, those are out there. I've dreamt of them since I was very very young, and whether I achieve them or not, might not even be the most important thing. It's that I've got something to chase, that's and it's North something Star. that that's something that will keep me working um, every day, and something that I'll enjoy chasing for the rest of my life potentially. And I might never get there. I might I might actually have got as close as I ever get, but that's not the point. It's having something to, mm. it's having something to chase. Um, you know, I absolutely want to leave um, like a legacy on, you know, the academy is very important to me um, and how people develop in the game and what they gain from the game. That's something very important to me. And I would love to, um, as much as I, you know, might achieve or may achieve or may not achieve, um, still at the side, at the side of that, I would love for people to think of Tommy Fleetwood or the Tommy Fleetwood Academy is something that's doing so much good for people. Great. Um, so that's something. And, um, you know, I would I would love to be Rick Shields in a 10 shot. Well, I get that. That's, that's, probably, probably, happens, happens, that's probably the third goal. That's, that's probably we'll get realized world number one. The third goal. Well, again, you know, when you talk about <laughs> dreams that you're chasing, whether you achieve them or not, it's something to aim at. Like, that's that's one of them. I can guarantee if that is one of the goals, that's one that can easily be ticked off. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but like I say, I think you... you, you I love the fact that that's not changed. I love the fact that in hopefully in 10 years, you've achieved, well, even shorter term than that. Next year, next year you achieve the goals, you know. That'd be great, yeah. But I feel like it's nice that those haven't changed, that it's still about performance. It's still about, obviously, you want to look after your family. You want to be set up for life. I, I totally get that. And as I said before, I don't mind any professional golfer doing incredibly well because you deserve every, every penny. Um, like I say, but I love the fact it's still world number one. It's still the open. It's still... Ryder Cup legend, but potentially Ryder Cup captaincy is that kind of in the I in the dreams? Uh, yeah, probably. I think I've got a lot to learn. Uh, my Hero Cup captaincy went very poorly at the start of the year, didn't it? Uh, I've got a zero for one there as captains. Uh, but you learned a, a lot. You got to cut your seat somewhere. I, I did learn a lot actually in the academy. It's one of my proudest things in my career that captain in that team. Uh, they've got the the locker. Uh, so we, that Hero Cup, we tried to. Uh, I don't even know if people remember the Hero Cup. It was so early on I in the year. I must admit, when you said uh, it, I was like, oh, yeah. Um, well, I remember it. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously me and Fran got asked to be captains of those teams, GB, uh, GB and I against Europe. And um, there was a lot of things. That it was part, it, that was one of the things after Whistling Straits that we were talking about literally on the plane home from America um, that we wanted. Uh, it used to be called the Sevy Trophy. That was the Sevy Trophy, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. But also in before... The Ryder Cup in 2018, we had the Eurasia Cup mm. where Europe played Asia. So we always had like a team event and we felt like we'd lacked that because we either didn't have the rookies that came in, you know, didn't have as much experience in the team format because, yep. you know, we've been playing professional golf for a long time. Mm. You don't get any team <laughs> games. And also like you, you get pairings from those, from Gosh, those events. Um, so that the was Americans that, have like the President's Cup, don't they? Yeah, exactly. So that was something that we wanted. Hero Cup came about, uh, me and Fran, uh, got the chance to be captains um, and but we had a lot of 
tried to make things as similar to a Ryder Cup as possible. So like you walked into the team room, GB and I team room, you had everybody's locker and the kit and everything. And um, my locker is in the academy there That's on show. Because cool. it was really cool because all the players left a little message and signed the locker at the end of the week, which um, even as a captain where we got beat, they were still very pleasant with me. That's really awesome. Just on that then, regardless of, just back, regardless of tours though, is, is team golf something that I take it you enjoy? Is that something you could envision a future of in some capacity? Or do you just prefer that grind on your own? Um, that's that's a very good question as well. Um, like, yeah, like team golf is, team golf's great. Like, I don't know whether it's because we don't get to do it as often. Yeah, it's that nice it change. Becomes, uh, it, it becomes like so cool when yeah. you do it. Um, but without doubt, like the family that we become um at the Ryder cup or the you know at the hero cup the just the the team environment that you create how much you support each other um how much you celebrate everybody's like good shots when they've won a hole or hold a putt it's all brilliant and and winning and losing as a team uh it is actually you know better than doing it on your own yeah you know um most of the time um although you know i still like I say, um, for my dreams and ambitions, I can't really do that in a team sport. No. So. Well, like I say, winning as a team, I can imagine that that atmosphere afterwards is just electric. Like, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, I, yeah. I managed to, I was lucky enough to gate crash the, the after party briefly. Yeah. Not the after after party, <laughs> not the players, but like. I don't think I made the after after party. <laughs> but like, just even seeing that where you've got yourself, your family, your friends around, you, you, yeah. you, you know, the players coming down in the bloody pyjamas, the Ryder Cup pyjamas, like that, you don't get that if you individually win, do you? No, the no, individual no, win, it's you, your caddy, your team yeah, around yeah. you. Um, and, and kind of really, it's a much smaller affair. And very often you end up traveling somewhere else anyway. Yeah, exactly. You can't really go out and get hung no. over too much. I think if you grow up, I don't have that much experience in it. I need to win more to let you know. <laughs> like, uh, I think if you grew up playing golf, which we all did from, from being young, that was my sport. I was, obviously wasn't great at it, but I did miss that team element. My mates who played football, part of a team and stuff. Yeah, when you yeah. just kind of, obviously we had junior teams against other clubs and yeah. I used to enjoy that quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Playing county golf was epic. Yeah. Well, there's more Love pressure on you, isn't it? It's what, uh, yeah. you know, if you're the final man and you're on the green and everyone's around. Do the Tommy Fleetwood just win it and just... Do, do the old Tommy Fleetwood squat and <laughs> just dominate. Hit a lucky one. Tommy, thanks for your time. It's Thank been a you. pleasure as always. Um, anything else that we didn't cover? I'm sure there's lots, but I'll just have to come on Same again. Same for part three. I think the golf ball debate is very interesting, but we need to know a little bit more about that at the moment, yeah. don't we? Because <laughs> yeah, that, that's looking like it's going to be a universal thing now. It's not even looking uh, like... It is, it's for everyone, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I was a bit... <laughs> I was a bit surprised that it was uh, for everyone in mm. a way, but I, you know, I, um, I'm, uh, I'm someone that golf courses. We only have so much land, so mm. I, I am. Uh, you either have to change the way you make golf courses, or um, you know, d- do something about it and stop the ball going so far. I, I never want to stop somebody's skill of being a long hitter and make and you know, making that a closer margin or being an amazing driver of the ball and making that a closer margin, but. Um, you know, overall, from a long-term perspective, um, like either, you know, there's, there's golf courses out there that do stand the test of time, like a a Hilton Head, um, a Colonial. Um, I always think that, that courses where the, the ball is uncontrollable out the rough, if you like, mm. got somebody... Uh, Doing we maintenance the at the yeah, Tommy the, Fleetwood Academy. The, the the we're cutting the rough. The, uh, the, 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 the we're, making we're making, it look we're making the rough uncontrollable. Um, <laughs> but do you know where um, you've always got a shot? But there's like flyers or the course yeah. is firm. Greens are small. There are obvious obvious ways of combating um, like long hitting, but um, you still want to watch people hitting the drivers and still want to watch people taking fun. shots on. So you've got to find the best of both worlds. And um, you know, I don't. Again, I don't know what the right way to do that is, but um, you can't can't keep making golf courses um nice. can't keep making golf courses longer that's not the answer um so you know being able to keep long good driving you know long really good driving as as a strength and as an advantage um while you know making golf a bit more sustainable in terms of the land that we have is probably the the, the next challenge if you like and yeah. we'll see what the best way to do this I'm excited Just, about all the new YouTube videos we can make with the new oh, golf ball yeah, <laughs> they'll be like, yeah. be like Christmas has come uh, early <laughs> just one last thing then before we wrap it up speaking of golf equipment while we're on that topic we don't want to name the drive yet so this podcast probably go out before the embargo but I'm guessing you've been tweaking with the new tailor-made driver mm-hmm. and potentially putting that in the bag 
What's that like for you, that process of, of putting a new driver in? You're known for your driving, obviously, super straight. Um, like, it must be a big task, or is it simple these days? What, what's that like for you? Uh, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not as easy. So, um, this one in particular, I used it at the last event of the year. Yeah. Uh, Tiger and, and Roy were using it. If Tiger and Roy want to use it, you know that it's going to be uh, put in early. That you're yeah. allowed to use it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, but it, th this one's been a really good driver. So, like, literally, I mean, I, I don't even know. Um, again, when you go back to having a manufacturer that works for you, um, like TaylorMade, um, Adrian, uh, th that, that fits all my clubs with TaylorMade, you know, let him do the work. He he knows what's likely to work for you. And this driver was pretty much straight in as it yeah. as it was like. Wow. And um, for me, it's launched a bit higher, slightly less spin. Like it's been it's been very very all the good things. You know, yeah. um, like it's been very very good. And sometimes you just get a driver uh, that might not quite you know work straight away, and then it takes a bit more time to get one in there. And I think it definitely varies year on year. Uh, Stealth two that went straight in that was a really good driver and this one again has been really good so well, there's some... again going back to going back to the f1 analogy it's almost like some some years mercedes don't bring out the the best car or it needs a bit more yeah, tweaking yeah, for yeah, the driver yeah. or whatever it may be it's like it's like a, a driver that's that comes out from any brand well yeah. and then obviously the different head models but i suppose it's hard for tailor made or any brand to bring out a driver that's going to suit you suit rory <laughs> suit tiger and yeah, suit yeah. the bloody general world of golfers too yeah, it might suit you the colors this yeah. year a bit more though Colours are bad. The colours are bad. There's a bit of blue. There's a bit of blue. Yeah. I told Tiger, nobody likes red. <laughs> <laughs> Red's been no good to anyone. Well, right. Amazing wee time again. Thank you, Tommy. Um, thanks for having us here at the Talk Tommy on. Fleetwood Go. Academy here at the DP World Golf Performance Centre, Jamira Golf Estates. Very good. Well done. First that time. Quite In the edit, that'll just be the first time. <laughs> thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we shall see you all very soon.